when we learn to draw, shaking things up, changing the way we draw every now and then is a great way to actually push and develop our skills and to discover new things about the drawing process more broadly. And a great way to do this is to choose a subject that we're fairly comfortable with, but to push ourselves to draw it in a fairly fast, quick, more gestural style. And I thought this house is a great subject for that, certainly for me, since I draw a lot of small buildings at the moment, to just see what sort of marks I make when I've got the pressure on me with time. Because often we want to draw a quick, fast drawing. We just want to do a sketch. We don't want to doodle. We want to actually pull some things together in our scene, but we don't want to spend a great deal of time. And we want to try and develop the ability to capture the freshness that a fast sketch, when it's still accurate, when it's still in proportion, brings. Now, you're watching this in real time. This drawing, the, the actual fine line part took me uh, 12 minutes and 19 seconds to draw. So you're watching all of that in real time. I then decided that since I was trying to do it really fast, that cross hatching would be, well, a bit counterproductive because I'd either have to go quite slowly to get the darker values of this, or I'd have to just not do enough and therefore not get the values. And that would probably just make something that already has a bit visually of a, of a loose feel just look a bit messy. So I decided to use my Copic sketch markers to do that. Now that section I've sped up to double time. So the whole thing in real time took me 16 and a half minutes to do, but the four minutes of the sketch markers I've sped up to basically two minutes. So if you want to watch me do that in real time, use the cog icon once the markers appear and I start doing the values, start putting gray scale on, um, on the figure, on the buildings, then you can slow the video speed down to half speed and that will show it to you in real time. Now, this was a bit of a tricky one because there was no really clear, obvious starting point in terms of a nice, simple shape to draw that I could draw easily and then use as a reference to pivot in each direction away from. I started with the, the awning then, since it's roughly in the middle, the, the veranda, and I tried to use the posts as uh, the spacing between the posts as a way of getting the proportions worked out. Notice the, the simple decorative pattern in timber under the, uh, the guttering that goes around the veranda roof, the veranda cover. Now, I made a point of doing that at the start, both because it affects the way we see the proportions of the space underneath, and secondly, because it let me establish a fairly rough style by deliberately not doing it in a more precise, exact, almost ruler-driven way. I established in my mind, as well as on the paper, that this is going to be in some ways visually a rough grab, that I'm really looking at an overall effect of the building. I'm certainly not trying to draw precisely. If you see my videos on capturing the effect of detail when there's a lot of detail rather than the exactness, it's really the same principle, except I'm using that thinking for the entire drawing. I'm trying to capture the effect of the whole building, the whole scene. That includes just as much as the building and the decoration on the building, that includes the foliage around, whether it's the big tree or the grass in front. So I'm moving out in, in all directions. I, I probably extend these windows just a little bit too far, make them at a fraction too wide, which pulls the whole wall out slightly. It, it doesn't affect whether the building looks right or not. It's just for me, an annoying difference between the reference and my drawing. And again, it's something to remind myself next time I do something in this way, because this is the way I do it, I just need to tighten the windows as they foreshorten. I suspect what I've really done is I haven't been focused enough on allowing for the thickness of the pen 
in my lines. So in effect, I've been drawing the spaces accurately enough, but not allowing for the fact that my lines need to become thinner as they move further away because of the effect of foreshortening. And that, in effect, pushes the wall out two or three millimetres. However, it's good to understand it, but I'm certainly not going to stop and cry tears over it because the clock's on me and I'm wanting this to be quick. And again, when we don't have long to draw, we do have to commit to lines, perhaps a little prematurely to what we normally would do. And we also draw them usually with a perhaps a snappier, fresher feel. We're not going as slowly and that introduces often slight variation in the line thickness, in the way the line looks from one end to the other. And that can introduce, I think, a very pleasing uh, dynamic factor to how our drawings look. Again, these are the things we discover when we do a super quick drawing just to experiment and to see what happens. One of the biggest problems I see in beginner drawings is that they look labored. That for what the subject is and for the size it's being drawn, that it's taken clearly too long because there's been so much care taken, it's introduced this artificial heaviness and and um, um, in, in, into how, into how the, the drawing looks. Having line work that has a sense of proportion in the way it looks to what it is and the, the context for our drawing is, is a very helpful thing to do. Notice I corrected that line there. As soon as I drew it, I knew it wasn't quite right. So I drew the right line in. And that correction is in my mind a lot less obvious than leaving the wrong line in simply because that's the one I'd drawn. My mistake had the effect of pulling that top further forward. Now, I don't do a great job with this either, and I can remember thinking, Ugh, I actually drew this last night. So, um, and I left the gap because there is that, that small, that vent um, in the ceiling. But look, in all honesty, I wasn't actually feeling that well at this stage, which is why I didn't finish it last night and post it last night. And so the latter part is a bit rough and ready, but that's okay because that suits the style. If I'd been trying to do a more a more exact drawing, I, I probably would have thought, look, I need to stop. And But in some ways, keeping this tempo going, knowing that I was going to finish this in seven or eight minutes, it helped me to think, look, just, just keep going, Stephen. And now I'm aligning where that vent is with what's underneath. Now, in a sense, I could have put it anywhere. But if I put it anywhere, while it wouldn't have been obvious to anyone looking at my drawing who wasn't looking at the reference, I wouldn't have learned, I wouldn't have developed slightly more the skill of lining things up or even reminding myself that this is the process for doing it, that when I introduce new elements to my building, I need to align it in the reference with parts I've already drawn, and then I need to look at my drawing and see if I can align it the same way. Now, sometimes my drawing isn't exact enough that if I aligned it exactly with the reference, it's not going to line up in an obvious way with something it needs to line up with or line up with a bit more in my drawing. In that case, I decide where I'll put it because in the end, I need to make my drawing look like it could be real life. So sometimes it's it's the drawing we favour with where we shift something to. But what we want to aim at is developing the skill of getting things precise enough that we can align fairly exactly with the reference. Now, again, with this vegetation, there are these large, strappy, flax-like plants up the back. And then there's a, a lower section of something in front, which I actually think is just probably overgrown grass. But in effect, there's two levels. And then there's this tree. Now, this is the sort of tree with very small leaves that is easy to get very bogged down in or to do a little bit in a lot of detail 
and then a lot almost of nothing, which always looks awkward. Whatever I do, whatever marks I use to start to create the effect of this tree, I need to do it in a way that I can be consistent for the short time I've got across the whole scene. Now, I am aware that I'm going to be using the sketch markers, so I don't need to work as hard to introduce value with hatching as I otherwise would. So it's always helpful if we know how we're going to finish our drawing. And I don't, I don't attempt any hatching under the veranda. And that's the sort of detail that normally would take a lot more time. And I'm also trying to position where the shadows are going to go. Don't need to do that, but I find generally it works better, particularly if I'm doing fairly quick, lightish lines, if I've got a pen that's a bit dried out. And so I can vary the lines a little more by the slope I hold it against the paper with and the speed with which I draw it. So I can get some very light lines, which are very useful for guidelines even though I can't erase them, they're not super obvious at the end if they're light enough. They just become part of the overall visual feel of the drawing. So thinking, is that enough? So I'm really just checking now and putting some marks in for shadows and the marks on the roof. Now, when we put marks such as these on the roofs, we've got to make sure that they line up if they pass behind something and that also the angles of each of them are consistent with the other angles. Perspective affects things and where the sun is coming from. All these, all these shadows come from a common light source, which means that they have a certain relationship with each other and we need to capture that. I so often see drawings where there might be two chimneys and there's two shadows on the roof and the shadows that have been drawn in are skewed and they couldn't possibly come from the same light source. So I've switched now to my markers. I'm using a 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.2 and a 0 0.1. Mostly the 0 0.3 to get the main, the main value. I switch to a 0 0.4 now and I get a darker value in the corner. I haven't got time to be precious doing gradations and so forth. Sometimes going over a few times with the same value does darken it a little bit. And I need to be aware that most of these plants at ground level are in the shadow except for the extreme left as well. So I, I really wasn't feeling great at this stage so this is a bit rough and ready on the roof. I was just thinking, oh, I, can't. I have, to, have to keep going now. Surely I can finish this. The line direction is important. Notice that I did the lines there to be sympathetic, at least, with the corrugated steel, corrugated iron channels running down the roof. And now just very quickly with these. If you buy Copic markers, they can be refilled. I didn't realize that. I was throwing them out and buying new ones. I'm pleased at some point I discovered that they could be refilled. It's handy because if you've got the ink on hand, then you can always refill them. You can also replace the nibs, which I also didn't know for a very long time, even after I knew that they could be refilled. So now just trying to get the effect on this tree. It's good to go dark because that gives the brightness for the light, creates the light effect. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Hope you found this interesting. It's really great to, at times at least, practice doing a really, really fast drawing. We do develop skills in this way that we don't get in a more measured, even more laboured drawing. So why not give it a go? I'll post this photo, of course, on my channel community page. But look, whatever you draw, however long you take to draw it, whatever style it's in, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.